Chen Jiu's attendants rushed to inform Yuxuan that Air Highness's wound had suddenly deteriorated, and he had never experienced such pain before. Yuxuan called for someone to quickly fetch her medicine box. Ki Wanbao, hearing this at the door, said to herself, How come Chen Jiu's injuries still haven't healed? Yuxuan delicately applied medicine to Chen Jiu's wound, witnessing his evident pain. She advised him to endure a bit longer. Ki Wanbao observed quietly from outside the window. Hubili anxiously remarked that the injuries were caused by the soul annihilating sword, and despite the time that had passed, they only seemed to worsen. Chen Jiu reassured him, saying he had grown accustomed to the pain over these days. Yuxuan mentioned that there was no cure for such wounds, and without ascension, they could only endure the suffering. Her medicines could only provide temporary relief. Ki Wanbao pondered outside in agony. Upon seeing Chen Jiu fall asleep, Hubili escorted Yuxuan and attendants away. Ki Wanbao emerged from her hiding place, catching Hubili before he closed the door. She questioned why Chen Jiu's injuries were so severe. Hubili retorted, asking how she had the audacity to inquire. She insisted on knowing, holding him back and demanding an explanation for Chen Jiu's critical condition. Hubili reminded her of the sword she had wielded, stating that the wound inflicted by the heart-piercing soul-annihilating sword would never heal. Ki Wanbao, confused, asked why it was her fault. Hubili expressed his anger, recounting how Chen Jiu had saved her, and she repaid him with poison and a sword thrust, hitting the just-healed wound precisely. He emphasized that Chen Jiu never boasted about his deeds, and she should spare him the torment. Ki Wanbao realized and exclaimed, so, Chen Jiu saved me. Hubili urged her, if she had any conscience left, to pity his highness and not disturb him again. With that, he entered the room, closing the door behind him. Chen Jiu in his semi-conscious state, he uttered Yuan Bao. Ki Wan Bao recalled the moment when Chen Jiu ingested her truth-saying pill, the sword she aimed at Chen Jiu, and then, filled with sorrow and regret, she questioned herself, Ki Wan Bao, what have you done? You actually wanted to kill your savior. Chen Jiu's pain was all because of her. Overwhelmed with sadness, she crouched on the ground and wept. Ki Wanbao woke up from her slumber, and Yuxuan asked with joy, Are you awake? She cautioned Ki Wanbao not to get up and emphasized the need for proper rest. However, Ki Wanbao sat up and inquired, Sister Yuxuan, is Chen Jiu's injury really incurable? Yuxuan affirmed that all she could do was alleviate his pain. Ki Wanbao expressed her determination to do something for Chen Jiu, stating that his injuries were because of her, and she felt compelled to help him in some way. Yuxuan mentioned a task that needed to be done but warned Ki Wanbao that it would be arduous and troublesome. Undeterred, Ki Wanbao asserted that she was willing to face any difficulty as long as it could contribute to Chen Jiu's well-being. Yuxuan handed her a small bottle and explained that in the Hundred Flowers Garden, there was a frost-condensing flower that would soon produce a special nectar. The challenge was not knowing exactly when it would happen. If Ki Wanbao could collect this honey, it could be used to create medicine to alleviate Chen Jiu's suffering. Yuxuan informed her that the flower nectar was extremely delicate, and Ki Wanbao had to carry the small bottle with utmost care. There could be no slightest tremor or movement as any disturbance might cause the frost-condensing flower's nectar to scatter, rendering all previous efforts in vain. Ki Wanbao stood beneath the frost-condensing flower, holding the small bottle with unwavering hands, her gaze fixed on the flower. After a day had passed, Yuxuan and a maid approached to check on her. The maid inquired, Can Ki Wanbao hold on? Yuxuan remained silent, offering no response. In front of Ki Wanbao, a bee danced nervously. She anxiously prayed for protection, asking for the blessing of the Bodhisattva to make the bee go away. The bee then landed on the back of her hand, and she remained motionless, silently waiting for the bee to fly away. Another day passed, and she still stood there, hands cradling the small bottle beneath the frost-condensing flower. Grandmother and two attendants came to check on her. One of the attendants remarked to Grandmother that Ki Wanbao had been standing there for three days, motionless just to collect this frost honey. It seemed that she still harbored some feelings for Chen Jiu. Grandmother responded, comparing her sacrifice to Chen Jiu losing eight lives in Wang Jiyuan, 
stating that what she endured was negligible in comparison. Yuxuan was in the midst of sipping tea when her attendant entered and informed her, Miss Yuxuan, it's time to collect the honey. Yuxuan set down her teacup and replied, let's go. Kiwan Bao saw the frost honey emerging and joyfully exclaimed, great, it's finally here. However, just as the honey was about to overflow and fall into her small bottle, it flew past her, and she realized that Yuxuan had absorbed the frost honey into her own container. Kiwan Bao asked, Sister Yuxuan, what are you doing? Yuxuan nonchalantly replied, collecting honey. Kiwan Bao questioned her, so, Sister Yuxuan, you knew the frost honey would form at this moment, and I didn't need to stand here holding the bottle like a fool for four days and nights. Yuxuan responded, if Miss Chi feels wronged, wasn't it said that you wanted to make sacrifices for Chen Jiu? If standing here for four days and nights makes you feel wronged, then everything Chen Jiu did for you is truly not worthwhile. Kiwan Bao insisted that she didn't feel wronged, understanding that everyone in Baiming was feeling wronged on behalf of Chen Jiu. Yuxuan remarked, Miss Chi, why don't you be the one to bring this bottle of frost honey to Chen Jiu? Kiwan Bao entered Chen Jiu's palace, finding him lying on the bed. She walked to the bedside and sat down. Observing his pained expression, she quickly fed him the frost honey. Gently, she inquired, feeling better. Seeing that he hadn't awakened yet, she reached out to touch his wound but hesitated and withdrew her hand. Then, she softly questioned him, why keep these things hidden from me? She delicately took out his ghost soul talisman and asked, how did it find its way back to you? I thought I'd never see it again. You'll give it to Sister Yuxuan in the future, won't you? With a hint of reluctance, she then asked, Chen Jiu, are you really going to marry Sister Yuxuan? Placing the ghost soul talisman back on him, she couldn't hide her reluctance. Chen Jiu reached out, grasping her hand, and murmured, Yuan Bao, don't leave. Perplexed, she asked, what are you saying? He repeated, don't leave. She, still in disbelief, questioned, Chen Jiu, what are you talking about? Once more, he uttered, no, don't leave. Finally realizing what he meant, she joyfully smiled. Chen Jiu woke up holding the bottle of frost honey, contemplating. His fox spirit maid entered and exclaimed, Your Highness is awake. He asked her how long he had been asleep, and she informed him that he had been in a deep slumber for four days and nights, causing great concern among everyone. He expressed surprise, saying that if he had slept for four days and nights, Kiwan Bao must have left already. The maid inquired, Who, Your Highness? He asked if Kiwan Bao had come last night, but the maid replied that she hadn't, it was Miss Yuxuan who brought the medicine. Chen Jiu muttered to himself, wondering if Yuan Bao had truly left Baiming. The maid assured him that there was no news of Miss Chi planning to leave. His disappointment turned to relief, and he instructed the maid to prepare some refreshments as he wanted to visit Yuxuan's palace. The maid agreed, acknowledging the efforts Yuxuan had put in over the past few days for his sake. Kiwan Bao and Yuan Gongzi returned from their outing, and she thanked him for showing her the beautiful scenery of Baiming. Yuan Gongzi commented that she seemed inexperienced, and she replied that people from the Fox Clan were generally warm, generous, and friendly. He remarked that unlike humans, who were narrow-minded, shallow, cowardly, and spread rumors about the Fox Clan being monsters. This led to a playful argument and chase between Yuan Gongzi and Kiwan Bao. Meanwhile, Chen Jiu and his fox spirit maid arrived at Yuxuan's palace. Disappointed not to find Kiwan Bao, he silently assumed that she had truly left. Just then, Yuxuan appeared, and her maid presented the refreshments, thanking her for her care during these days. Yuxuan replied that it was her duty and asked Chen Jiu to stay for a while and have some tea. However, he declined, mentioning other matters he needed to attend to. As he turned to leave, Kiwan Bao and Yuan Gongzi were locked in a struggle, each refusing to give in. Upon seeing Chen Jiu, Kiwan Bao quickly released Yuan Gongzi and greeted Chen Jiu. He glanced at her, then swiftly departed. She chased after him, asking if he had something to say to her. Yuan Gongzi and Yuxuan watched Chen Jiu and Kiwan Bao leave, and Yuan Gongzi questioned why Chen Jiu seemed upset, wondering if he had offended him. 
Yuxuan remained silent. Chen Jiao turned to Qi Wanbao and asked, Didn't you say you were leaving Bai Ming? Why haven't you gone yet? She replied, acknowledging that she knew he wanted her to leave, but she had changed her mind and didn't want to go anymore. He questioned, Why? She recalled the moment he held her hand and said, Don't leave, and based on that, she answered, Because the person I care about the most is here. I don't want to leave. After a moment of contemplation, he turned away and left. Gillian's large troop stopped during their march to take a rest. The eldest disciple informed him, Yushin is about to arrive. Gillian instructed the eldest disciple to convey a message to Suhanyu, emphasizing the need for caution and prudence upon their return. He stressed that without his orders, they must not act recklessly. The eldest disciple acknowledged the instructions and went to deliver the message to Suhanyu and Sakyankyun. Huashan approached Huo's Hyea and advised him as a father, reminding him that he shouldn't dwell on things that don't belong to him to avoid falling into the abyss. Huashan told his father to rest assured, assuring him that he understood. Late at night, Ki Wanbao couldn't fall asleep. She whispered to herself, deciding to sneak into the Yushan Hall to check on Chen Jiu. Upon reaching his room, she found him peacefully asleep. She quietly approached and sat by the bedside, leaning over to say, Chen Jiu, I've been thinking about you over there, unable to sleep, while you're peacefully sleeping here. She then lay down beside him, gazing at him. She told him that she knew he wanted her to leave, but she couldn't go just yet because she needed to return his heart and soul. If he insisted on her leaving, she asked him to at least wait until she had returned his heart and soul. She said, Chen Jiu, only when you retrieve your heart and soul and ascend can your wounds truly heal. Gently caressing his face, she mentioned that when Yuan Gongzi took her out to play today, she saw many adorable fox children who reminded her of him. However, her heart yearned for the day when Chen Jiu could take her out to play. Suddenly, Chen Jiu turned and embraced her. Surprised, he asked, Chen Jiu, are you awake? But he remained in a peaceful slumber. She laughed, reached out, and hugged him back, saying, This time, you're the one hugging me first. When you wake up, don't blame me. Gillian and their group arrived at Yueshan. Gillian informed Lord Su and Huan that everyone had been exhausted in the past few days. He suggested taking a few days to rest before heading up the mountain to search for clues about the real culprit. Both lords agreed, and everyone settled into an inn. Suhanyu, accompanied by Sakyankyun, alighted from the carriage and headed towards the inn. Huo's Hyea instructed his senior disciple to keep a close eye on Ki Wanbao and report any unusual activities promptly. Outside the inn, Lord Su received a report from his senior disciple. The disciple mentioned that everyone had now arrived at Yueshan, and Kilian would soon send people to find the demon sex stronghold. This would pose a threat to their plans. Lord Su decided to take action that very night and urged his senior disciple not to delay. The senior disciple acknowledged the order and went to make the necessary arrangements. During dinner, everyone enjoyed a pleasant meal in the restaurant. Suhanyu returned to the room with a tray of food to dine with Sakinkyun. However, in the dining hall, people started feeling dizzy, and the dizziness spread rapidly, eventually causing everyone to lose consciousness. Taking advantage of the chaos, Senior disciple of Sushanman emerged from a corner and proceeded to go upstairs to the room of Suhanyu and Sakinkyun. 